computer. Hey, Wade Volleyball, welcome back to more virtual content. Today, we've got Coach Juliana with us, our head 14 ones and our head 16 ones coach. Juliana, how are you? I'm good. I'm very excited to be here and talk to you guys a little bit today. Thank you so much for joining us. We miss you. It's so good to see your smiling face. We miss all your fiery energy. But um, families, players, what we're going to be doing today is Coach Juliana and I are going to watch a 14s match from Triple Crown this year. And we're going to be able to get a little bit of an insight on what Juliana sees with her team during matches and how she trains. And I'm going to be able to ask her some questions. So we're going to get started. And our match is going to be against A5. And A5 is out of Atlanta, a fantastic club that we are constantly competing with. And this is day one of Triple Crown where Juliana's team was ranked in the top five and she was able to play the other teams that were in the top five in kind of this round robin. So Juliana, tell us a little bit about how we got to set three here. We're about to start the third set. What happened in set one and two and what can you tell us a little bit about A5? Okay, so it's a, it's a super fun day. First day of Triple Crown. We had already played TVA at TAV, and uh, we beat them. So the girls are fired up to play A5, which is actually the number one team in the, in the tournament. And it's 1-1. Uh, we, we played them really well first game, snuck, snuck a game on them because they're up in the very end, and we came back with a little run. We won that first game. They came back and played really well the second game. So right now, both teams had their good, you know, uh, game and their not-so-good game. Right. And we also realized that the setter loves to set the outside. So I told my girls that. Okay. So let's get started. And feel free to share with us kind of anything you see. I see that you're starting in row one with your setter right back. Right. Uh, I love the, this first play already. Amanda hits her spot on the serve. Ava checks her hitter on the outside. Maya does a nice play in the back there. So it's crappy play, first game, play of the game. So I knew they were ready to go. And I think your team does a really good job of hitting their zone. So if you're at home and if you want to watch Juliana's back, you can see the zones slightly that she's giving. And Juliana, in practices, do you really talk to your team about hitting your zones? Absolutely. I tell them is 50% of the point is just serving the right person and with the right, with the right pace. So we definitely tell them it's very important first contact of the game. And obviously your setter here, Amanda, starting you up 2-0. Uh, what, what do you tell your team before set three? You know, I told them, I was like, just play like it's the first game. And we're just, you know, starting to play. Because if you start worrying about, oh, if I don't do well this game, it's 15 points, I'm going to you know, be in trouble, then you forget that it's about volleyball. So it's just go back out there and play. And that's a fantastic swing out of their outside hitter. And I think you have the right target. You got him out of system, but um, she was able just to hit that high, hard, deep corner. Yeah, we're trying to take that girl out of the game. So that's why we're serving her tough. Great three pass. And I like how we run the middle there. What, what do you tell your team with good passes? You know, I tell, I tell Jenna, I was like, you know, if you want to get the balls, you got to be up. And Jenna's my middle. So she's always up, and we're passing really well this tournament. So she got a lot, of, a lot of hits. So if you want the ball, call loud and be up to hit. I'm always on my middles, too, about when they don't get set, they don't seem to jump. That's just laziness to me. I always want to see my middles up in the air, even if they don't get set as an option. I think it really challenges middles to always be engaged in every play. Oh, absolutely. You, you have a job even if you don't get the set. So you got to be up trying to, you know, get some, some blocks to worry about you there. Now, Coach, is this team bigger than us or smaller than us? It, this team is very, very big. It's probably the <laughs> biggest team we played at Triple Crown. The middle that's not on the court right now, it was 6-3. Oh, no, she lost her shoe. Oh, you got, you got to be got like that kill. one. That's the best play of the tournament. <laughs> she loses her shoes, 
jumbles the girl to the corner and picks up her shoes and put back on. Nobody even notices. So, I love it. I love how you were even okay. celebrating on the court. <laughs> and because that team was so big, I was, I was talking to Amanda to move my hitters around. So if you watch my outsides, they're not hitting just the four. They hit a 32, they hit a two, they move around because the block was pretty big. Now you've got Maya there taking the second ball. What do you tell your liberos? Wow, that is a great dig. What do you tell your liberos about setting the second ball? Another, um, wow, stop. That was an incredible scramble play right there. That was a fantastic play. And uh, wow. the libero did a ton of good stuff there. Uh, she hit her zone. Set a broken play to the T, played some gnarly defense. So everybody kept playing. The, the rally kept getting harder, and they kept playing even harder. So that was awesome. What a great yeah. momentum point, too. I think that matches can be changed when you have a momentum play. And I think a momentum play, what, what it really comes down to is a bunch of different players that are able to contribute. You know, we, had, we interviewed Reed Pretty and said, yeah, Clay Stanley can go back there and get an ace. And that – that calms us all down, but when, when everybody's contributing to a monster play, that's how you create momentum. And I saw you celebrating, the team celebrating. That, that probably was a, a major point for your success in this. Absolutely. And that's something I always tell the girls. If you always play every point like it really matters, then you're going to always catch the momentum. And if you lay off a little bit, that's when it goes to the other side. So we try to be energetic with this group. I try as a coach, just be very energetic the whole time because you want to you wanna keep that momentum on your side. And I, yeah. I always tell the kids, when, when somebody calls a timeout on you, you try to make that timeout worthless. And you go out there and you earn that point. Your team just did a great job on that. Absolutely. And going back a little bit, what you said about the setting, um, I tell my liberos or my DS, is anybody that's in the back can even be a middle that she's my setter and she needs to run offense like the setter. So they take the broken plays and keeping balls in good, you know, position to hit very serious. So you're not telling them, I want a nice high, high ball. You want to keep it in some sort of tempo. Uh, no, not necessarily the tempo. I just want them to give me a very hittable ball. You know, you don't take that second ball that, that was beautiful. Three great pass. It was there. such a great pass, too. I mean, Nikki there, your outside hitter, just put the ball right on top of the setter's head. So yeah. even though your team's small, your ball control so far has been fantastic. Yeah, that's why we, we're very, you know, we, we pride ourselves into being just really good ball control. Everybody's taller than us, but we definitely have uh, better ball control than most of the teams. Dakota hits her zone again. I'm making them serve area one to make it a little more difficult for the, for the setter to set. Great pass to that dig right there. Right on the 10-foot line so the setter can get off the net. It doesn't have to be tight. Great dig out of your outside hitter. And you're yeah. going on the side switch. So do you tell your team, Juliana, that um, you want to be the first one to switch sides? Do you tell them three games to Three games to five, B to five first. Do you have any tricks for game three? We don't talk about scores. We do not okay. talk about scores. We don't care if you're up 10. If you're down 10, we are just ready to play the next play. I love and that. The only thing I say, I say, I tell the girls is you're not going to win with the last contact. You're going to win with your first and your second contact. So everybody's focused on giving me a good first contact, a better second one, and the third one is going to happen just by default. Yeah. So the girl that's middle front right now on A5, she's about 6'2", 6'3". Ooh, 14-year-old. Yep. Yeah, she's gigantic. 13-year-old right now. So I told my setter, just make sure we're not setting ones right there. And she kind of sets nobody there, but hey. Yeah, so it seems like you run a 5-1 system, which means that you have a setter in the front row. And it looks like that was a back row attack that you guys weren't able to connect on. Is that something that you've been trying to work on as a back row attack? Absolutely, absolutely. Because we run a 5-1, I want my setter, Amanda, to have always more than two options. So if you are a back row player and you're not a libero, you should be calling for a ball, for a D, for a pipe. She needs to hear that she has options. And knowing that there's a big block on that side is good for her to know that she has options to go away from that big block. Mm -hmm. 
I love that. You know, she didn't make the easy set. She went all the way to the slide. Another good scramble play there. Oh, that's an aggressive swing. And we got a net, I think. No. I, I think they got it, but I, to, I, I turned to Nick on that play and I said, that was the right swing. Yeah. You missed it, but you went high, you know, it, it, to the line. You didn't hit into a low seam. So fantastic. I, mean, I, I backed at it and got it. She didn't play yeah. it safe and tip and roll. I like that aggressiveness out of your team there. We want to see them in big, tight situations making big plays like that. Absolutely. And when team's big, they're not going to be as fast. So we're trying to get a little bit more tempo on that set. And you saw the block a little broken there. It helped us too. Oh, what a great block. Good job filling that hole. I tell our middles all the time, I want you to seal to that outside block and bump into them with your shoulder and then land safe with your feet in between your hips so you guys don't land on each other. Uh, do you spend a lot of time blocking, coach? Absolutely. I think blocking is probably one of the hardest things for the younger, you know, athletes to learn. Mm -hmm. So we try to break down as much as we can, do a lot of hand uh, mo motion so they know where their hands are facing to, then their body second, and then the jump, you know, because it's just a very hard skill to learn. So a lot of time spending in the blocking. And, and Cam, my middle, has come a long ways with her blocking and did a great job right there closing that season. Oh, that's a big miss serve. That always feels good as a coach. 11-7 here. That girl is their go-to player, and the, the, the coach is taking her out because she got a few errors. So we got into her head, which was a good thing. Mm. And another thing is we're small. So I always tell them the block needs to be very disciplined and just little touches here and there can make a huge difference for us. I love that your setter didn't set the middle on the perfect pass in a free ball, free ball situation. And a great soft block there. Absolutely. All right. And I always tell my girls, like, really big, long rallies, you cannot be stopped on the court. Let that – keep moving. Keep finding something to do on the court. It can yeah. be the cover. can be the talk can be to just pass an easy free ball and take the outsides out of the play, just let them just go swing. So everybody, if you watch it, even on the long rallies, everybody's moving their little feet and, and making, you know, making a little bit of a play, even if they're not touching the ball. So coach, during this time out, I'm gonna ask you a big question. I think you're kind of a big deal in San Diego and nationwide as a coach. You're, you're at Cathedral where you do a fantastic job. Um, you're always coaching one teams at Wave and Everybody wants to know what it's like to play for Juliana as a coach. I think a lot of times you come off very intense, but you also come off very celebratory. What, what do you, how would you describe your coaching style? You know, um, I, I, was a, I was a player myself. So I had a lot of coaches that influenced the way I decided that it would be my style of coaching. And I always seem to really respond to intense, positive, and just energetic, you know? And that's how I decided that I was gonna be as a coach. And I saw a lot of success doing that way, especially if you, you're hard on them, but you're also very, very happy for them when they do the right thing. So I think it's just a good balance, uh, but show them, that, show them that you really care. And, yeah, you and they know that, that by me celebrating the way I celebrate for them. Some of your best video highlights are you celebrating after winning tournaments. I <laughs> all that. All right, here we are, 13-7 in game three. Great pass out of the libero. Nice job out of her. One thing my, my, my team is doing well here, I keep telling my blockers to make sure they keep track of their hitters. So if you see, there's very little one-on-one -on -one block mm -hmm. um, against my girls, they always put up a two, uh, two blocks because they know who their responsibilities are as blockers. Oh, that is such an amazing swing. Who was that? That was Nikki. And that, I mean, that was Ivana, Ivana. Ivana with an incredible swing. We had a one pass. Our offense was out of system. We had a bump set. And that's exactly where A5 wanted us, but we still went high, hard, and deep. Just saying. Yeah. Incredible, incredible swing out of that young lady. 
Another thing that we, you know, I've been working with them a ton and this, uh, we win right there and I'm displayed by them. Absolutely. But one thing that I've been working with my girls too is try to get them out of their comfort zone. So we all know you can have your favorite swing, but instead of just always going there, just take a little bit off, work on different shots. Don't let the other team be a step ahead of you. You always step ahead by just mixing it up and being brave. So if you watch that game, we had no business being, beating A5 that early in the tournament. And they just played very well. Uh, they, they knew their, their job. They knew who they're blocking, knew who they're serving. They stay focused. And we ended up beating A5, which is super fun. Well, congratulations. I think serving was a huge point right there. I don't know if you missed a serve, and all of your serves were super tough. Um, great team. Thank you, Coach, for sharing this moment with us and going through – that last set, a lot of fun. All you Wave families and players at home, we miss you guys and can't wait to get back in the gym soon. Stay safe. Thanks again, Juliana. Thank Bye, guys. You. See you guys later.